Hey there everyone, it's Aish here. In case you're watching this in one go, welcome back again. So now let's go ahead, now we know that how to create the store. You saw that it's really simple, even manipulating any value in the store, it's just state, set, that's it. That's all it is, it takes. Now any application that you're going to build is also going to confront with the store again and again and there are two parts of the application. One is where you add the data and the second part where you read the data and manipulate the data as well. So in our application also we have uh, two of these segregations here. In this video or in this segment we are going to work with how we can actually uh, add these data to the store so just pulling pulling in some data and sending it onto the store that's all what we're going to do so that is going to all happen into the component itself so let's go ahead and create a new folder into the source and let's call this one as components so new folder and component or components yeah components is fine Okay, let's go ahead and create a new file into this one. And the first uh, component itself is going to be course form and of course .gsx to just denote that it's a component itself. And we can go ahead and simply add up like that. So let me go ahead and see RFCE, React Functional Component. And uh, let me go ahead and try RFC. Yep, this is much better <laughs> than the previous one. RFCE. Okay, so we have imported the React. Obviously, we'll be using the state. So let's go ahead and say use state. And I need a little bit of the change because I don't like this honestly too much. I'm gonna go ahead and say const course form. Let's convert that into arrow function. Should be all happy now. And at the end of it, export default course form is fine with me. Okay, we also need to use the store itself. So let's bring up our store as well. It's really simple. We're gonna go ahead and say use course store and that is coming up from this uh, one directory back we need to go into the app course store so everything will be imported from there okay now moving on further down the road we forgot one thing here should be all happy now okay now let me first walk you through that how we are going to import something the first idea is that we want to use this add course feature okay let's go ahead and work on with that let me go up here simply before the return we're going to go ahead and say i want to use this add course and obviously that's coming up from the use course state so let's go ahead and say use course store and that will be giving me a state so let's we go ahead and say state and there we go now in this we are going to say state dot add course now what is the advantage of using the zustain and this particular line up here now the most important and the most beautiful thing about it is that it doesn't affect anything in my component, any state. So even if anything else changes in the state, like the remove course or any other thing which is available in your, st in your state gets changed, it doesn't affect this component itself. The form is going to be only and only binded, not really ideal case of saying it as binded, but this will not impact anything else. So I hope you get that. Now further, the rest of the thing are just pure React itself. So let's go ahead and say, uh, let me just use the state itself. So use state, there we go. Do we have out of syntax? Use state, yeah, that is the one. Let's go ahead and add a course title and the course title and by default, this one is going to be empty. So let me go ahead, remove this. There we go. So this is the default state of the course title. And there we go. Now also further down the road, we can also try out a little bit of a log message to check this one out. So we're going to say course form rendered. So this will give you a little bit of the brief idea that when the re-rendering of the course uh, component or the course form component is happening. And this will prove you point that yes, it doesn't re-render the things again and again, it's just the basic one. Now let's go ahead and create a simple function which is going to handle whenever the data comes in. This is basics and absolute pure React. So we're gonna go ahead and say, let me call this one as handle course submit. There we go, like that, there we go. Simple arrow functions, just like always. So first we need to check whether the course title is present or not. If the course title title is not present, then we're going to simply put up a return message. In fact, we don't need this also. We can go ahead and simply say return. And we're going to put up alert. I know you really hate it, but we're gonna just go ahead and hack it with the alert message this time. Please add a course title. There we go, nice and easy. Okay, if the course title is present, then obviously we do have an access to this add course and this add course, if I go up here, requires just a course to be uh, passed on to it. 
So let's go ahead and work on with that. So let's call this as add course. This is going to be an object. Uh, usually you are pulling up these objects from the databases, but this time I'm all fine. Uh, the two things that we're going to require is to put an ID. So let's go ahead and say ID. And another thing that we're going to require is the title. So title is going to be coming in as course title. Now the rest of the thing which is problematic is ID. We are not using any UUID or something as import. So for that we can just directly use a math.seal method. And inside that we can just go ahead and use a math.random. And uh, let's go ahead and multiply that by with a big number. Let's just say a hundred thousand or a million. Hundred thousand and a million. Yeah, so you can multiply it with any number. That's up to you. Okay, so now the course is getting added and this component is only going to re-render this particular component, the course form only. Okay, now the rest of the thing is pretty easy. We just need to fulfill these things up here. So let me go ahead and quickly work on with that. So first, let me remove this and add this up. So we're going to have a simple division which is going to have a class name of form dash container. There we go. And again, in case you are worrying about where these classes are coming in, this is not from Bootstrap or anything. We are just pulling them up from here. So we have already copied and pasted this. I'll provide you the code files of that. So no worries on that. Further down the road, we are going to have some input. This input is going to have a simple form dash input. There we go. Type is, we don't need actually type. It's by default the text type. Yeah. Let's add more values into this one. So first is value from where this is going to take a value of course course title because that is what our state is. So value is going to be provided for that. What happens when the value is being changed so that is important. So we're going to go ahead and say on change. Now what happens on the change. Let's go ahead and define that first we capture the event. Once the event is being captured then we go ahead and simply use up here set course title that is a state. This will take the value from event dot target dot value. Pretty simple, classic and basic react. That's it. Now, obviously, this is setting it up. We need to have an uh, button as well. So let's go ahead and just below that we're going to put up a button and let's add a little bit of the button classes as well. Button dot and this will be form dash submit dash btn. There we go. Okay, further, we need to call this one as add course. Let's move this up because this needs an action as well. And that action, obviously, we have defined this one handle course submit. Let's go ahead and call this one as on click. There we go. And now we have this not this one, of course, there we go like that simple callback or a anonymous function. How would you like to call this one handle course submit? There we go. Shouldn't be a big deal at all. Okay, so should look good. There we go. Now we have a course form and it is also having a button. Now one thing that we have to do is make sure this is all called into the app.js. So let's go ahead. We have so much of the things going in the app.js. Uh, we can call from header. Remove this header. And let's call this one instead of app main container because that's what is defined in our classes container there we go now once we have container let's go ahead and put up an h1 with a simple style let's provide the styling directly up here because we haven't wrote any of them for this one so font size how much font size let's go a little bit big on this one so how about 2.5 m 2.5 rem and uh, Let's add a little bit of the margin bottom. Margin bottom and that will be also uh, to RAM. Okay, let's go ahead and add this one as simply my oops, my course list. Okay, once we have this H1, let's further down the road, let's call some of the components. So this component will be course form and in case yours is not not auto completing please go ahead and add this line up here should be all okay we can remove this one also we are not using any logo so we have a few completed is not defined let me go ahead and quickly check which is in the store 
let me check where the problem is in the completed so let me quickly check that uh, really my bad <laughs> a simple mistake so i've checked the course.id is equals to of course course id so let's copy that and then so again really simple i'm pretty sure most of you have already caught that so toggling means simply we want to we are checking the course id if that course id matches with the given id then we are changing the state of that so pretty simple so if that matches then we are taking extract or expanding the array itself with the courses and only toggling the feature where completed is now being reversed whatever the value is otherwise we are reversing the course so should be now all happy yeah really simple not really simple took me some time to actually debug that but that's okay okay so moving further down and this is what our course list is looking up like so now let's just go ahead and add a react zustend course and add that okay so this is sort of working but we need to change the state and react and all of that so we'll be working on that so that is not hooked up properly up there but it's a good progress i, I would consider that let me go ahead back onto the code itself and now let's go ahead and check a couple more few things the first thing that i would like to check up is that it should actually clean the state as well not here in the course form so once we have handled the course submit the course is being added there is no point of keeping that title up here so we're going to say course, set course title that should be cleaned up okay so now it should be all good let's go back on to our browser here is our browser we have added the zustin so let's add what uh, a uh, tensorflow tensorflow js tensorflow js <laughs> tensorflow js add the course so this is getting away now what we have reached so far is that we are able to actually manipulate whatever the data is coming in we are able to put that into the store store is able to put that into the local storage the persistent local storage as well so if i go ahead and right click and inspect that I should actually see some of the things into my memory, not memory, the application. Yeah, application. So we have some of the storage being available. Let me go ahead and check. So this is my local storage. This is what we have. And we can see the courses are up here. So this is the state that we have. And if I go ahead and expand this up, there we go so we have the courses getting a unique id and the title as well of course the completed is not getting in and we are also able to see the state as well so all the states are coming in tensorflow react just and i clicked it accidentally twice on that but all of this is going in okay so we have made some progress not bad not bad okay so the first part is all done that we are able to pull in some data and we are able to push that into the state as well as into the local storage the next step is how we can actually grab all of that data from the store itself and can manipulate that that we are going to do in the next video or the next section wherever you are watching